Hi everyone, and welcome to Atkama Innovate 2022, telling stories with data. My name is Della Zhang, Account Director at Atkama. Today, we're here to launch the latest module in the Atkama One platform, Data Stories, a tool for visualizing data as a kind of narrative, or as we call it, a data story. It is a functionality that you have been asking for, and we have listened. We are very happy to tell you more today about both the standalone freemium version of the tool for all data people, from data analysts to executives, and how we have integrated data stories into at the Karma One platform for existing users, and the benefit it will bring to you and your organizations. We have an exciting lineup for you, including a data editor from Guardian and a chief data reporter from the Financial Times, here to tell you about how they use data to tell stories and how important it is for them to visualize their data effectively. We'll also cover example visualization to show you how we work with data stories for various data management use cases, including data quality, data governance, and master data management. And we'll also touch on how data stories complement our strategies around prioritizing cloud and hybrid deployments. Just one housekeeping detail, please add your questions to the chat as we go along and stay with us to the end for a live Q&A with the Karma team to get them answered. And now let's turn things over to our CEO, Michael Klaus, to kickstart this event with a quick update on how things are going at the Karma. Michael, over to you. Hello, my name is Michal Klaus. I'm Atacama CEO. Welcome to Atacama Innovate. We're here today to give you an update on Atacama and also bring some exciting product news. Before we do that, however, I have to comment on the development in Ukraine. Ukrainians need help. So I'd like to ask everyone, please help in whatever ways you can. Thank you. Atacama had an amazing year. We've doubled number of new customers. We've almost doubled our revenue and we've added more than 160 new colleagues along the way across all territories. Of course, we've also worked hard to innovate our platform driven by our data fabric vision. The value proposition of the data fabric is pretty simple. It is to provide high quality data to the value creators across the organization, be it machines or people, in an easy and seamless way. Atacama One is a unique offering on the market, unifying the following functionalities, data profiling, data catalog, data governance, data quality management, mass data management, and data in integration. This vision, has been increasingly validated by the market, including industry analysts. For example, here is a survey by a recognized analyst company, Bark, asking more than 2,000 data executives about their data management priorities. If we look at the top priorities of those executives, you can easily recognize it is the same combination that Atacama One is providing. Today, we are here to introduce a new exciting addition to the platform, a brand new module which will make it even more useful for organizations and users, a data visualization component called Data Stories. With that, I'd like to hand it over to my colleagues to share what they have been working on. Thank you, Michael. Before we dive into the demos of Data Stories and talk more about the product, we have invited a special guest and a thought leader on data visualization. A few weeks ago before this event, I had the opportunity to sit down with the chief data reporter at Financial Times, John Ben Murdoch. If you have seen any of the coronavirus trajectory or trackers charts by the Financial Times in the past two years, he is the person who created them. And when, as he puts it, pandemics are not happening. John uses data and graphics to tell stories on topics including politics, economics, climate change, and sports, and is a senior visiting fellow at the London School of Economics Data Science Institute. This is just a brief preview of our conversation. We'll be sharing the full recording in follow-ups for this event. Let's listen in. 
Thanks, Stella. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me at the event. It's, it's a real privilege to be able to speak to everyone, everyone today. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to share with you a, an initial presentation, which is which essentially captures the, the core principles of how I approach data visualization and how we at the Financial Times approach this, this area more broadly. And um, the focus today, um, sort of building on what, what, you, what you folks have been doing at Atacama is on really getting into the idea that with data visualization, we're telling stories. We're not just putting out uh, sort of individual isolated charts. We're actually creating an overarching narrative that can be much more effective than doing, than doing single charts here and there. Um, so what I want to start with is the fundamental way that I and we at the FT think about this is that if you're going to create effective charts, you really need to know how people consume charts. People really consume charts like they're watching a movie or like they're watching television. They're, they're trying to get a message away and they're not, they're not focusing on the individual details so much as the overall bit of communication, the overall message that a chart delivers. And so the way I think about things is... You can, improve, you can improve any chart by making these, should we say, incremental decisions around exactly what chart type am I using, um, how precisely am I encoding the data in this chart, how am I tweaking the design to, to make it a little bit more engaging, more attractive. And that will, that will improve the chart slightly. It will take the chart you started with and make it better. But to really massively multiply the impact that your chart has, it's about focusing on the message that that chart is conveying, really what you're fundamentally trying to say in any given graphic. And so again, I think a lot of the resources, a lot of the tutorials are focused on these incremental improvements you can make to charts. And I think that's fantastic. And you know, and we all wanna know how we can make our charts better. But I think that we miss the wood for the trees sometimes. We focus so much on those, those small incremental changes and not on the fundamental difference between most good charts and most bad charts, which is what they're actually saying and how clearly they're saying it. So data visualization fundamentally is a communication skill. I know, look, a lot of people think about this as almost more, more of an art area or, or possibly slightly more mathematical. You know, some people approach data, data visualization because they want to make beautiful things. Some people approach data visualization because they want to make, they, they want to solve mathematical problems and work on geometry and, and that kind of thing. But for me, those two things are fantastic. But if we want our work to be worthwhile, we've got to think about it as a communication skill. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples of this now in action in our work at the Financial Times. And what I mean by this, this absolute um, sort of razor sharp, laser sharp focus on communication and on text and on messaging. So Taking this, taking this uh, idea that good words are the key to good graphics on board, probably the most um, sort of iconic, you might say, example of our work at the FT over the last two years was our work on what we called the coronavirus trajectory tracker. So this was a graphic that first um, I, I made the first rough version of in early March 2020, where we wanted to answer this question of how, how many cases have there been, how many COVID cases have there been in different countries around the world? And to what extent are these different countries following in the footsteps of Italy, which at that time was known to be having a very, very, a very, very bad um, pandemic. Now, this is the very first rough version of that graph that I made um, in response to a colleague's email. You can see this obviously isn't something we would have published on the FT, but this was just a proof of concept showing that if we showed this on the X axis, this on the Y axis and these countries, that this was going to get across the point we want to make. But the question is, OK, how do we go from here to the, the final chart that we published on the FT and the chart that ended up really kickstarting the work that we did on the pandemic over that, the, the following two years. And, and this is a chart whose final version ended up being seen by tens of millions of people. So again, coming back to my previous point about the incremental improvements on a chart versus the, the sort of multiplicative improvements. The first thing we did, of course, was just to style it up, to, to turn this into a, a graphic that looks like it could be published on the FT. So we've got our, uh, iconic colored background there. We've got um, our own fonts and our colors, uh, the colors of the countries, and we've, we've tidied it all up a bit. So this is good. Like this is, a, this is a more aesthetically pleasing chart than what we had before. But at this point, I still think this is not a million miles away from lots of charts that people were doing at this time. It, it shows the same data. It shows the same axes. It's not vastly different. So the real value adds that we introduce at the FT is this text layer, this annotation layer. So we've now got a, a very clear narrative title on this chart, 
which tells you exactly what you should be taking away from this. And we've also got these annotations coming in to answer some, some of the questions that might pop into a, a reader or a viewer's head when they see this chart. So the title means that even if someone has never seen a chart before, even if they've never seen a line chart like this, they've never seen um, a chart showing this type of information, they know what the chart is trying to tell them. So for those who are familiar with charts, that's just a, a big addition, a big extra help in terms of telling them what to, to take away from this. But for those who haven't seen these charts before, it's essentially an entry point. They can read that title, then look at the chart and start to work out how the title relates to the chart. It's essentially teaching someone how to read a chart in the process of showing them a chart. And, and the great thing that we experienced over the last couple of years is we really saw this actually happening in real time. You know, there were old school friends of mine who I've not spoken to for like 15 years, and they were getting in touch with me and saying that their mum had just shared this chart with them on WhatsApp and that kind of thing. And it was, it was really, from everything we could, we could tell, it was really about that focus on, on text to bring in the sort of non-chart people to the, to the idea of understanding and, and communicating in charts. Another technique we, we talk about at the FT is this idea of visual rhetoric. So rhetoric being rhetorical, this is a, about focusing on how you say something and how you can introduce more emotion, more, more sentiment and, and, and make your statements more powerful by thinking about how you say them. And I think we can do exactly the same thing with charts. So this is an example of, of that in action. This was from last year after the, the US had pulled out of Afghanistan and the, the Taliban were returning to take control of the country. And one of the big questions that everyone had was, what will this mean for girls' education in Afghanistan? Because of course, when the Taliban had previously been in power, girls had been essentially banned from attending school. And so instead of just asking that question, we thought, how can we do this in chart form? And you'll see that we've got this, it, it's a sort of classic data visualization archetype. You've got a change over time, a sudden change over time, a break in a series. And so a couple of the flourishes we've added here. So, so one is the fact that we switched the line from blue to red, where the Taliban were in power to try and encode the fact that something negative was happening. We've got that line sort of fading from blue into red. We've got the highlighting of the Taliban being in power. And then on the right hand side, we, we explicitly asked that question. We put that question mark there saying, OK, so what happens next? And so this just becomes a much more sort of holistic way of showing this than a simple line chart where we have no question mark, no changes in color, that kind of thing. So I think it's really valuable to just think about those small additions you can make, which really turn this from being a, a quite sterile chart into something that has real emotional power. Another thing we can do is to think of charts almost as frames in a sequence, almost as frames in an animation. So you're, you're showing someone the evolution of something over time. I, I always come back to, to change over time. I think it's one of the most effective um, ways of communicating things through data visualization. So this is another example from a recent piece of Financial Times work, looking at how the geography of footballing power, so or soccer for, for those in, in countries who use that term, looking at how that has shifted over the last 75 years. So a very different topic to coronavirus, but as, as, we've, as, uh, as Della was saying earlier, we do cover a lot of different uh, topics at the FT. And so what we wanted to do here was say, today or for the last 20 years, everyone, everyone who follows football, who follows soccer has been very familiar with the idea that all the talent is, is concentrated in the West of the continent. But that's not always been the case. And so this is a graphic showing where the strongest football teams in Europe have been um, geographically located over time. And again, I think the power here is instead of just saying, well, here's where they were before or here's where they are now, we can actually show that gradually changing over time. So 75 years ago, most of the talent was concentrated around Vienna and Budapest and the, the epicenter of European footballing power, which is that black X mark, is, is sort of in central Europe. But if we move forward by 35 years, we see the quality of the clubs and that, that sort of footballing epicenter shift across towards the West and slightly further South as, as talent started to grow in the South. And then if we shift that through again to the very latest data, we see it shift even further West as the amount of money and talent in the game shifts further West. But the point is trying to show all of that in a single graphic would be very ambitious. I think it would, you would lose that idea of movement um, whereas by showing this as three, three distinct frames, you're bringing the person along with you. I, I think, again, this, this is really about thinking about accessibility and approachability of your work. A single graphic that tried to convey all of this would rely on your audience knowing how to read these types of charts. 
Whereas if you walk them through, talk them through and demonstrate step one, step two, step three, they can actually see the physical movement, which is what you would have been trying to convey in a static single chart. And finally, I just want to go through probably the the sort of most iconic example of this, this storytelling change over time technique that we've used at the Financial Times in, in the last couple of years. And this was another, another COVID chart where um, about 12 months ago or just over 12 months ago, the, the big question everyone was asking in the UK was, OK, look, we're seeing large numbers of people getting severely ill with COVID this winter. But is it not the case that there are always large numbers of people getting ill with, with viruses over winter, with things like the flu and pneumonia. And so the question was, OK, can, first of all, can we answer that question? But secondly, what's the most powerful way of us telling that story? And this is where, again, my first thought went immediately to the idea of building something up with frames, with animation and thinking, OK, instead of just showing on a single chart what the total number of people severely ill with COVID looks like now compared to what, what it would be with flu, Let's see if we can actually create this sense of expectation, show people repeatedly what a normal winter looks like in terms of respiratory disease, and then jump in with what it now looks like with COVID. And this was the result of that. So we see here's what the total number of people being admitted to ICU with flu looks like in a typical year. We go through several years to give this idea of here's, here's what normal looks like. Here's what we would expect to happen. And we then get to 2020, 2021, in comes COVID, and it shatters that expectation. Now, I'll let this loop again, but the, the idea here is that instead of simply showing the end result in the first place, by spending a few seconds literally demonstrating to someone through, through shape, through space, through movement, that this is what normal looks like, this is what we would expect to happen, and then having the, the big sort of, the big impact, the big visual and emotional impact of, of saying, Here's how that's changed. You create a far more effective piece of work and something that will, will stay with people for much longer. And, and again, whether this is portrayed as, a, as an animation or as a series of charts, it's this focus on telling a story of crafting a message and of, 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 of essentially influencing the viewer's um, emotional response that I think is critical to how, we, how we've always worked with charts at the Financial Times. Thank you again, John, for the insightful conversation. Next up, we have Michael Baumgartner, VP of Product for Data Stories, here to introduce the product. He will quickly cover main benefits and features of Atacama Data Stories and speak to how Data Stories complements your existing reporting stack. Michael's sessions will be followed by three brief demos of the product, showcasing example of the data storytelling for your data governance, data quality, and master data management projects. Michael, over to you. Thank you, Della. Hi, everyone. My name is Michal, and I'm the VP of product at Atacama. I'm proud to introduce Atacama Data Stories, our next generation data visualization platform. What makes data stories unique is our approach to presenting data. Oftentimes, we find ourselves overwhelmed by complex dashboards or overly complicated BI solutions. These tools are great at showing all sorts of information across a vast canvas. However, they require expertise to set up correctly, and they provide information in a format that can be hard to understand for a business consumer. This means that finding the key information takes a lot of time. Data Stories, on the other hand, is simple to use, provides clear visuals, and has the ability to add context to the data with animations and an automated explanation of the data out of the box. Overall, this makes data easier to grasp for everyone. Don't just visualize data, tell stories. Let me briefly walk you through the product to show you some cool features. To get started, we need to connect to a data source. Let's use a CSV file for rapid prototyping. As you can see, no configuration is needed. Just drag and drop, and you're good to go. We can explore the dataset schema, which was inferred automatically without any prior configuration, or peek at the source data directly. Now let's look at how easily we can explain data. 
Data Stories offers explainers and insights to share interesting facts and provide context when presenting a story. Automated insights help you uncover noteworthy events, while explainers leverage real-time data so the information is always up to date. This reduces the repetitive work and allows you to create templates for further reuse. Dynamic cross filters and drill downs help you dive deeper and find the root cause. It's as simple as clicking on any chart element. Then the other widgets are dynamically refreshed. Make your presentations stand out by using animated charts or time machines. They can even be exported as videos for further sharing. Now let's go over some use cases where a data story can be used. A common question we get is, what's the difference between dashboards or BI solutions compared to data stories? Which one should I choose? We don't aim to replace BI solutions. They are an established part of the modern data stack. However, they are not a silver bullet solution to everything, and neither are data stories. We can use both in conjunction, opting for data stories when, for example, rapid development or prototyping of simple reporting is needed. In this case, time to value is lowered, iteration speed is increased, and a lot of repetitive work is eliminated early on in the process. The second case is going from operative oversight of dashboards to creating an easy to understand narrative and facilitating decision making. Oftentimes, people get lost in dashboards. To overcome this issue, we use a more natural flow of information in form of a story with sections and steps, which makes it easy to understand why a conclusion has been drawn or a decision has been made. And now let's hear from my colleague, David, who will show you how data stories can be used in data governance reporting. Thank you, Michael. Hi, my name is David, and I'm VP of Product for Data Governance. We have many customers using the automated data classification feature in our data catalog. Let me show you an example how such a classification project can look like and how the Data Stories module can help you to easily present a compelling data story. The example project I chose is called PI Compliance 2.0. The main purpose is to identify all the systems that contain PI data understand the characteristics of the systems, and improve the security and data handling procedures to achieve compliance. On the first chart, you can see how the customer has been cataloging systems over time, and you can see how many of the systems contain PI data. The majority of the systems with PI data have been cataloged in the first three months. This was thanks to the fact that the customer reused existing analysis conducted for a previous CCPA project. So they already had a list of systems with PI data and cataloged those first. As you can see though, not all the systems contain PI data. So the previous analysis was not 100% accurate. Moreover, you can also see that there have been many other systems that contain PI data and have been identified only later, meaning they were not discovered while conducting the original analysis for the CCPA project. In total, more than 3,000 systems contain PI data, and there are still some systems which the classification did not finish yet. Let me show you a few things about the characteristics of the systems. What is important on this slide is the fact that there are many SaaS systems that contain PI data, so the measures that could be enforced are limited as the systems are operated outside the company infrastructure. Another important aspect is access management. You can see that only a fraction of the systems is integrated with the company single sign-on and using the user roles defined in the LDAP. This means that the user and permissions management for almost 7,000 systems is done manually, which presents a huge security risk. And out of those 7,000 systems, 2,500 contain PI data, so the threat there is even bigger and the access management for those systems will have to change. Another important aspect we want to highlight is data retention. You can see that the majority of the systems do not have any data retention enforced. Only about 2,000 systems have some data retention, but all the other systems are not taking into account the user consent and legal base for keeping the data. This is a huge problem specifically for the systems containing PI data, as the company is exposing itself to a huge legislation, but also reputation risk. And this brings me to the final section, a roadmap for this example project. The next steps would be to finalize the list of all the verified systems where PI data can be stored and make sure the PI data is not stored in any other system. 
On top of that, the access management for the verified systems has to be improved and the systems must integrate with the company single sign-on and also use the LDAP roles for assigning permissions. And the third item is about the data retention, which has to be enforced for all the systems containing PI data. I hope this example helped you to understand how the data stories module can be used for presenting a compelling story and sharing the information in a way so anyone can clearly understand it. Now I will hand things over to my colleague Lenka, who will show you another example how you can use data stories for data quality reporting. Lenka, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lenka and I'm a product manager at Atacama focused on the area of data quality. If you are familiar with Atacama One already, you'll know it provides a truly wide palette of functionalities for various data quality use cases. From simply letting the AI assess all your data sources automatically, to creating focused data quality monitoring reports, allowing you to analyze the results and mitigate root causes of your data quality problems. That's a lot of information, and it's exactly the right opportunity to let data stories help you highlight the most interesting findings and communicate them to the rest of your company. From visualizing the state of the data quality issues for your tactical data remediation initiative meeting, to create always up-to-date overview for your department heads. Let's take a look at the data story that was generated from Atacama One and how it can help you illustrate your point for a quarterly review meeting. The last three months were the most productive so far. Our team added five new sources to our data governance system, resulting in monitoring over 16,000 tables overall. A growing library of DQ rules allowed us to achieve an impressive 20,000 critical elements evaluated every week on roughly 90 billion records. Adding the new sources, of course, brought challenges, since their initial data quality was not up to our standards, especially the data from the transactional domain, as we discovered. By focusing on proper integration and issue remediation, we achieved a significant increase in the data quality overall, achieving desired 95% target threshold at the beginning of the April. All that despite an integration incident in the middle of February caused by a load of obsolete data. It was caught immediately by our DQ alerts and resolved together with the source owner on the same day. In one click, I can share this story with you so you can easily inspect the details related to your subject area yourself. You see how the visualization really helped explaining the story and the best part? Thanks to seamless integration, you are telling the story directly on top of the real data in Atacama One. No copy-pasting of tables to spreadsheets, double-checking if the sum of DQ aggregation match there, or the headache of aligning charts in your slide deck. Focus on what matters. We can't wait to see data stories in the hands of our clients. So we have spoken to two of them about where they see the potential of this functionality for their organization. Let's listen in now for insights from Jason Wright at T-Mobile, followed by the Hanukkah team. When you're having a builder of business intelligence that's built into uh, the Atacama tool would definitely be um, more of a one-stop shop for us. We would prefer that rather than having to build something in a separate BI tool. Uh, I, I like the flexibility that you have in the tool so far, the use of different um, widgets and business intelligence um, components, the organization of it, the ability to get to things quickly, uh, because I'd want to pull up those dashboards quickly and want to share it with those that are not, that may be stewards in the business that may not be using um, Atacom every day. So I see this as expanding the number of users that can actually get into the Atacom data um, for data governance. So I think it's positive. I think this is a great direction for you to be editing. That's uh, definitely a step forward to close the gap that we have now in presenting within the platform. As an insights enablement, uh, we would like to provide insights by story. Yeah. Yeah. That's the intent. So, so yes, I have the reports, I have a data, but I want to communicate more vibrantly and uh, more user friendly way. By telling a story, we need to we we want to get close to the to the business and show them with in a language that is what they speak every day 
Yeah, so that's the intent. So uh, a report through which my business user is in a point to action. The knowledge retention within the organization, business knowledge within the organization is very difficult. People come, people go. But when someone who joins and then he is taking over that particular department and he looks at the report, he is not going to see the report the way the guy who left and spent five years in the organization. And right. that's the missing part. So I want to achieve knowledge retention, actionable business user, with the data and with the report. I think we need to find different means and, and to, to start sharing and, 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 and also give the opportunity to our users to do this. Uh, getting insights become like a Facebook post inside within the organization. That's what I see the potential basically. If, if, we give a, if we give an option people to publish their insights and understanding, it need not be right or wrong, but it opens up a conversation to make our data more accurate day by day by looking at those. Thank you. My name is Imani Pant and I'm a solution consultant at Atacama. Today, I will show you how you can tell a story about your master data management solution. Let's imagine that you already have Atacama MDM in place. It helps you consolidate customer data from three different sources, say SAP, Salesforce, and FAB4. Now, reporting to your managers and decision makers about those important metrics around the project's progress becomes effortless. With data stories, we can view how many records were imported from each of the systems and how many of them are distinct versus duplicate customers. Also, merging those three sources together provides us with a holistic view of the total number of customers we have in our MDM solution. We can then compare the quality of the incoming source records to the master data. You would expect the master data to be of better quality, of course, but it's always good to back this assumption up with real metrics. In this example, you can see how the master data quality is improving over time, which is great. You can see that the source data quality is kind of stagnating. If we drill down into one of the sources, we can notice that there is a different trend for each of the systems. Let us now have a glance at the comparison of the individual sources over time. Within the three-week time frame shown, we notice that the data quality for SAP has improved, FAB4 has remained stagnant, while that of Salesforce has dropped. Such metrics can be extremely helpful for threshold management. As you can see, that the average data quality from Salesforce system dropped below 75% since February 16th. We can also explore daily load statistics. In this chart, you see how many records were identified as duplicates based on each matching rule, and how many unique customers we were left with after the match and the merge process. We can also spot some daily volume patterns in this view. Finally, as we are aware that sometimes it is impossible for automated rules to solve every single problem which is why we offer manual resolution workflows. We can easily use data stories to monitor the workload of our data stewards. In this case, it's easy to spot that Sarah Taylor is quite overloaded with many issues that haven't been resolved for more than a week. I can also drill down to see that most of these issues are coming from Salesforce which we have already identified as a system with a declining data quality trend. So this is it for our short MDM data story. You can, of course, do much more. You can write your own story, use your own data. Thank you for watching, and now back to you, Della. Amazing. Thanks again to Michael, David, Lenka, and Himani. I hope you have come across away from those demo sessions with a better understanding of how Atacama Data Stories works in action. We are now nearing the end of the event. So far today, we have shown you Atacama Data Stories in action and the value it provides to you. But we can't let you go without a look at our vision for the future of Atacama One and how Data Stories fits into it. We want to tell you more about where we are headed and for that, we have Atacama's Chief Product Technology Officer, Martin Zahamansky. And finally, we'll close out the event with Afshan Lopfi, CEO of Atacama Americas. He will briefly tell you more about Atacama Platform as a Service and the benefits of a cloud-first approach. 
That is all from me for now. Thank you for joining and I will see you in a few minutes at the live Q&A. Martin, over to you. Thank you, Della. My name is Martin and I am the Chief Product Technology Officer here at Atacama. By now, you have had the opportunity to see how Data Stories already offers a plentitude of value to different users. However, this is not where it ends, but rather where we start. Today, I want to share with you our vision and especially how we think about Data Stories in the context of Atacama One and broader company-wide use by business users, data analysts, or anyone else interested in the data. So let me show you a sneak peek at our vision and the things you can expect to come to Atacama One platform in the future. I will use a couple of examples to illustrate what we have in plan. Let's say I am an HR manager, and one of my responsibilities is to ensure fair and equal pay for people across various demographics in my company. I'm looking for a report about company employees and pay fairness to present to top management. So I want to see things such as an employee distribution by gender, how salaries are aligned by gender, age, and so on. If you use Atacama One, you can just jump to the application and search for all data sets related to employees. Now, when the first bit of magic comes, you will find not only data tables, but also existing data stories or widgets available in the catalog. Here I can see there is only one report for employees related to retention. So I will have to create the charts I need. With Atacama One, this is easy for me as a business user. I don't need IT for it. I can simply check the employee master data file, which was suggested by Atacama One, based on usage by other users. I can browse through the data set and see the description, profiling, quality, data preview, and other information already available in the catalog. Looks like I'm satisfied with this data set because it has all the information I need, like salary, gender, age, position, and department. Now I can build my story about pay fairness in the company. I can easily open the data stories editor right from the same screen. My data is linked to the story and I can start creating the charts right away. And this is actually happening directly on top of a source system data, so I don't have to export data somewhere outside of the system. And there is no need to jump outside of Atacama One to generate further insights or charts, or even to play with the data set. In data stories, you can freely play with the available data, see things like turnover by age, or another demographic characteristics. You can analyze the distribution of salaries by role, by age, geography, gender, and so on, with no limits. Now let's say I want to add one more chart showing the number of employees per department. I can do it in just few clicks, easy as that. Once I am happy with the story, I can easily share it with top management in the convenient data stories reading format. At the moment, you can share the story as a publicly accessible link or share with selected users or groups of Atacama One users. What's coming in the future is the ability to share data stories back to catalog and attach them directly to selected catalog items. This is a very useful feature as the next time someone else is in your company is looking for some insights on the same topic, they will see it both in the search and also on the selected catalog item, giving them the business value they expect from catalog. Now the best part is that these stories are live. So they are not charts residing somewhere in PowerPoint, which you need to update again and again. They are simply always up to date. And our insights engine is able to provide readers with interesting information and new facts when things start to change. In this second example, I want to focus on somewhat more common use case. A lot of the time when you work with data, it's complex. And you need to look at several sources to gather the required insights and information. So let's say I'm manager from the marketing department and my CMO has asked me about the performance of our digital campaigns. She also wants to know how many customers from the most recent seasonal campaign can be followed up by our outbound call center. Projects also encapsulates all the information related to the project, including things like quality, related stories, widgets, discussions, or in the future, even data mastering. So now I have the data available, or at least the first two data sets, so I can start with my insights. I will skip this part of showing you data stories and how you create the insights. You have already seen this. But what's interesting is that a lot of the time when you own stories or any part of the data that is used by others, 
you are also responsible for the quality of the information or data you provide. You see that as part of this project, I created data quality rules that check the quality of full name and phone numbers, which are the important factors for our call center when they contact the customers. Now the platform alerts me that there has been some drop in the quality of phone numbers. So let's check what's happening in our data set before somebody from call center calls us again. We see right away that there are some values that are wrongly formatted, missing area codes, values not filled in, validations that don't pass, and our call center would struggle to auto-dial them. What I can do now is either ask the responsible people to correct these values manually, which might work in some cases, like for the missing values, or I can use our data preparation functionality to perform automatic updates, like standardizing the format of the phone number with a pre-built function. Once finished, the data are updated automatically, and our reports will be correct. But we can also expose the data to external consumers, such as other BI tools, or export the data to our call center application. So this gives you the ability to create, easily edit, manage new data directly in the platform, and avoid the need for external Excel logs or G sheets that lacks proper governance. This will give you the possibility to create real data apps and to use data inside or outside of the Atacama One platform. In my case, I was asked to drill down the report by countries, but I'm missing this attribute in the source data. I only have states available. What I can do is create a new managed data set in one data, allowing me to, in Excel-like fashion, simply paste the list of countries and ISO codes from Wikipedia. Then, for example, I can manually add the continent perspective. Essentially, in this case, I'm using one to create reference data and then I can use this data as any other source in my data stories report. So what you have seen is our vision for how to complete our data fabric experience and give more users more power to work with data. We are creating insights, helping to make better decisions and providing better data to different users, applications or machine learning models as part of your data fabric. The vision is to enhance the catalog experience with built-in insights, widgets, and stories to allow users to work on their specific tasks in one space and do everything from accessing the data to manipulate the data through the data prep, watching the quality, appending insights through our data stories, providing the data further, and making all of this available in the catalog so other people and teams can easily collaborate. So that's it from me. Hope you like our vision. And if you want to contribute, don't hesitate to contact me. And now for a quick note about Atacama Pass. And to close out the event, I'll pass things over to Afshin. Afshin, it's yours. Thank you, Martin. My name is Afshin Lotfi, and I'm the CEO of Atacama Americas. As Martin said, today we had the opportunity to see how Atacama Data Stories provides value to different types of users. From our guest speakers, we've heard some of the fundamental do's and don'ts of visualizing data and what makes a data story compelling and the role that end users play in the creation of a visualization. We've also seen concrete examples of what makes Atacama Data Stories a next generation tool and the value it can bring to your data governance, DQ, and MDM projects. In contrast with BI application dashboards that can be overly complex or require an expert to set up correctly, Data Stories makes everything easier with clear visuals, annotations that provide further context, explainers and insights that are generated automatically, dynamic cross filters and drill downs, and visualization that can be exported and easily shared online. I'm very excited that Atacama will be offering a freemium version of Data Stories. This means that you will be able to take advantage of data stories right away. Whether you're a journalist, an NGO working with open data, or a data steward who's looking for a new modern way to visualize data stories for your management team. You can do it for free right now through the software service version of the tool hosted on datastories.atacama.com. Of course, we're also excited to provide a robust deployment option for current users of the Atacama One platform. Martin already touched on how data stories will help bolster a data fabric offering and make it more complete. It enhances your existing data governance, data quality, and MDM implementations with new visualization experiences for users and broadens your user base by allowing them to engage with Atacama in a more visually accessible and collaborative way. 
Now, I'd like to talk a little more about how we think about data stories in the context of the Atacama One platform and the broader data management market. Atacama continues to lead the way in developing applications that are scalable, resilient, highly available, simple to operate, and easy to install. In an effort to stay true to these principles, we have decided to make data stories an exclusive component of our past offering. This cloud-first approach will allow us to continue to innovate in a fast and agile way while providing the highest level quality to our customers. This is in line with Atacama's future strategies around prioritizing cloud and hybrid deployments. Our cloud or past deployment options offer distinct benefit to all Atacama users. Platform management and operation are handled by us. It comes with 24-7 support. Users can enjoy more frequent updates to the platform. It has guaranteed RPO RTOs. Scaling is easier and performance is better. And it can drastically reduce infrastructure, IT, and security worries on your side. We're following market trends in our customer's cloud strategy very closely. And we expect our customers to continue to migrate their solution to self-managed cloud or Atacama Pass. We are happy to announce that we have a dedicated team to assist our on-prem customers with this transition, and we're able to provide assistance and best practices to our customers. Our team is ready to discuss your needs around data visualization and help you take the next step forward in your data management lifecycle, including but not limited to your particular data management use cases and potential future migration to the cloud. Thank you for joining us today. This brings us to the end of the event. I saw a number of questions coming through the chat, so please stick around for the live Q&A session with the Atacama team. See you in just a minute. The countdown starts now. Thank you.